Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of CCK Live. My name is Christian McTarnigan, and I'm joined by Mike Westrito and Bethany Cook. And today we want to talk to you about some additional benefits that you might not know about um, that you might be entitled to in addition to your um, you know, monthly disability benefits at your percentage level of disability. Um, so VA offers a variety of benefits and assistance programs, assistance programs to veterans of the US military. Um, you know, as I alluded to, some of them are compensation benefits, unemployability benefits, TDIU. Um, you know, I think that we, we have a lot of information on our website about those types of disabilities, but there are a number of lesser known VA benefits um, that all veterans should be aware of that can potentially provide additional support. Um, so we're just going to sort of go through these one by one. Some of them might take a little longer than others. I know we have a few quick hits at the end, but Bethany, you want to take us away? Sure. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is um, death benefits that are available to veterans and their families. Uh, so we have some other Facebook Live videos in which we talk about compensation benefits available to uh, surviving dependents after a veteran passes away. Uh, but there are a few other uh, unique benefits that might be available as well. So um, the first benefit is um, veterans burial and funeral costs. It's possible to file for reimbursement uh, if you are um, the person who paid those costs um, and those forms are available on VA's website that you can use to file for those. Um, Additionally, it's possible to request a U.S. flag um, to be draped over a veteran's casket, as well as a presidential memorial certificate uh, to honor the veteran service. There are a few other uh, benefits available um, that uh, you can request to honor a veteran besides the presidential memorial certificate. Uh, it's also possible to request and receive, for example, um, a grave, a headstone, a niche marker, as well as a government medallion. Certain requirements have to be met for, uh, to be eligible for all of these benefits. Um, for example, um, if a veteran had a dishonorable discharge, um, then unfortunately none of these benefits are available. Um, but if you, the veteran does meet the eligibility requirements, um, you can uh, get the information on how to apply for uh, these benefits on the VA's uh, website. And uh, it is important to know that a lot of these benefits are time sensitive in terms of applying. Um, so you wanna make sure that you meet any deadlines, um, which is typically a certain time period uh, after the veteran passes away uh, to request them. Yeah, and Bethany, in addition to those benefits, another category of benefits that I think we're going to want to, to highlight here involve benefits for non-college degree programs um, or certificates or training. Um, really, in addition to receiving credits that a veteran could use towards a college degree, there are a whole host of other uh, you know, non-college degree programs and certificates that the GI Bill makes available. Um, some of these vocational training and certificate programs include things like HVAC repair, uh, truck driving certificates, emergency medical training certificates, um, perhaps a veteran's interested in becoming a barber or a hair uh, a stylist. Those sorts of trainings and certificates are all provided within the GI Bill. Um, so certainly something for uh, a veteran who uh, wants to receive some additional training and a certificate but doesn't want to go the college route. Uh, may want to check into because those programs and certificates do exist. Um, again, this benefit, I think, is really helpful for veterans who potentially want to change careers also. And so I think these vocational programs and certificates are helpful for maybe veterans who started in one field and want to now pursue something slightly different. Um, other non-college degree programs are available through what's known as the Vet Tech program, the Vet Tech or the, the Veteran Employment through technology education courses. Program offers accelerated training in coding boot camps, something that's, um, I think, you know, extremely popular now and probably will be continued into the future, or really similar information science programs or software training programs that veterans can take advantage of. Um, additionally, there are free IT certifications available to veterans. And again, I think these are all just different paths and avenues that veterans can explore, benefits that they can explore, uh, you know, should they choose to get additional training certificates or change career paths. 
And I think it's really important to remember uh, that in addition to, um, <clears throat> you know, the veteran taking advantage of some of the programs that you just talked about, Mike, there are also ways uh, and also benefits for the dependents of veterans. So members of your family who are dependents, um, if you're eligible for dependents educational assistance, which is sometimes referred to as chapter 35 benefits, um, VA can approve uh, special restorative training that would help the dependents of a veteran um, to overcome or lessen the effects of a physical or mental disability so they can work towards their educational training goal. Um, it has to be, so there are, as everything in VA, and I know Bethany talked a little bit about, there are rules. Um, eligibility has to be determined by a psychologist um, who after looking and working with a vocational re rehabilitation panel um, can prescribe these restorative training courses and they can help with speech and voice correction, language retention, lip reading, um, auditory training. And also VA can approve special vocational training to help dependents overcome a physical or mental disability. Um, and so, you know, the thing that's really great about some of these benefits, and I think the reason why we wanted to talk to everyone about it today, is it's not just always for the veteran, it can also be for uh, veterans dependents as well. Yeah, and there's additionally uh, financial aid uh, available to both veterans and their dependents for uh, schooling. Uh, for example, there are educational scholarships available for dependents of disabled veterans. Uh, there's a foundation called the Fold of Honor Foundation, which offers two educational scholarship programs for the dependents of disabled veterans. Uh, so the first scholarship, uh, the Children's Fund Scholarship, serves uh, K through 12 students. And the second scholarship, um, the Higher Education Scholarship, uh, serves those seeking a first bachelor's degree uh, or certification at a post-secondary institution. Uh, so both of these scholarships are based on unmet need, uh, meaning they're need-based. Um, so in order, when applying for them, you need, you need to demonstrate your eligibility uh, by submitting documentation um, by the awardee um, showing that you uh, do uh, meet the, the need requirements. Uh, and these scholarships can be valued up to $5,000 uh, per dependent per school year. And you can use the funds uh, to cover a variety of things, uh, including tuition, fees, books, room and board, uh, uniforms, et cetera. <clears throat> and uh, so that's a need-based scholarship available to veteran, uh, sorry, to veterans dependents. Um, but there's also financial aid available to veterans. Um, recently, um, the student loan forgiveness became available to veterans. Um, so there's a program called the Disabled Veteran Student Loan Forgiveness Program, uh, which essentially discharges the federal student loan debt of qualified veterans. <clears throat> to be eligible uh, for the student loan forgiveness, um, veterans do have to have either a 100% scheduler rating uh, or a total disability rating based on individual unemployability. Uh, and be considered permanently and totally disabled um, and for compensation purposes. Um, so uh, this is actually a pretty recent program. I think it's um, been available to all veterans uh, rated at 100% or in receipt of TDIU and permanent and totally disabled uh, for the past couple years. Um, but the Department of Education and the VA was reaching out to veterans who qualify uh, directly, um, but you can also fill out an application online uh, if you're eligible um, in order to file for the student loan debts to be forgiven. Another non-compensation related benefit that veterans should investigate um, involves VA pension benefits. And these benefits are monetary benefits, typically for veterans over the age of 65, typically income driven. Um, and these pensions are not specifically awarded to cover the cost of something such as an assisted living facility, uh, but the funds can be used however the veteran sees fit. So they could be used to help veterans in advanced age um, with those sorts of uh, costs and needs. Um, if the veteran isn't yet in an assisted living facility, the funds can be used for services like home care, AIDS, adult daycare facilities, um, anything like that, that a veteran may need over a certain age, um, you know, and uh, those funds can certainly be helpful for that purpose. The basic pension is awarded, uh, like I said, to veterans over the age of 65, but it is stipulated upon financial uh, uh, or income driven, I should say, basically low income 
Um, thresholds are, are set. Veterans must meet those special requirements. Um, and if they do, then VA pension benefits can be available to them. Um, aid and attendance is another benefit um, that we deal with here. We see in uh, a lot of our veterans, it's an SMC, what's known as a special monthly compensation benefit, SMC benefit. Um, and aid and attendance really can help cover the cost of daily living. So perhaps uh, you know a veteran needs um, the aid and attendance of another person to uh, regularly assist with activities of daily living. Um, this benefit can help with that cost. Um, these are benefits that are not automatically granted. They have to be applied for. And so veterans can contact either their VA pension management center or the nearest VA regional benefit center um, for assistance and instructions on where to file and mail uh, an application for those benefits. Uh, veterans can apply in person um, or electronically. Um, and so combined together, those two additional benefits really can be helpful for veterans who need, you know, some additional assistance, whether it be, you know, in an in a assisted living facility type setting or at home, and they need some basic aid and attendance. And in, in addition to all these benefits we've been talking about, um, you also get help with preparing your taxes, which is something that um, we have to do every year. So veterans and their families actually have uh, access to free tax prep services through the volunteer income tax assistance offices um, on the military on a military base. Um, you know, that's a program where IRS certified volunteers provide free basic income tax return preparation. Um, it can even help you electronically file if you are eligible to do that. Um, you know, the thing, one of the benefits of using someone in this assistance office is that they understand um, some of the complicated nature of uh, military related tax issues. Um, also, uh, you know, there are tax preparation services such as TurboTax that offers a free online IRS, IRS filing program if you're a disabled veteran um, with an adjusted gross income of $36,000 uh, $36, a year or less or you qualify for the earned income tax credit. So that's definitely something um, you know, veterans should take advantage of. And another important benefit uh, available to veterans and their families uh, are a variety of life insurance options uh, through the Service Members and Veterans Group Life Insurance Program. <clears throat> so this program offers a variety of life insurance options as well as competitive premium rates. Uh, some examples of the types of insurance available include uh, the service members group life insurance, um, family members service members group life insurance, uh, which provides coverage for a spouse and dependent children uh, who rely on a veteran for financial support, uh, as well as traumatic injury protection, uh, which offers short-term financial support to help veterans recover uh, from a severe injury. There are um, a few others as well, um, not an exhaustive list, but there's also the Veterans Group Life Insurance, um, which provides group life insurance after leaving the military service, uh, as well as Service Disabled Veterans Insurance, um, which provides coverage to veterans disabled uh, because of an injury or illness caused or made worse by their active duty service, um, in addition to the Veterans Mortgage Life Insurance uh, Program, uh, which provides coverage to veterans with a severe service-connected disability uh, for a home that has been adapted to meet their needs. <clears throat> so again, there are certain requirements that have to be met to be eligible for each of these life insurance options. Uh, so if you, you think either of this, any of this applies to you or you are interested, um, you can find information about the requirements and how to apply uh, on VA's website. And, and finally, a few other kind of miscellaneous benefits that I think are important to talk about here today um, involve both, both commissary privileges and disabled veteran preferences for federal jobs. Um, starting with commissary privileges, these privileges are really available now for you know, veterans to go in person or online for any service-connected veterans, uh, specifically with a rating of zero to 100% effective January 1st, 2020. Um, so that can be very helpful for veterans who want to go and take advantage of those privileges. Uh, and the second kind of miscellaneous privilege or um, benefit, shall I say, that we want to talk about today are preferences uh, for disabled veterans when applying for federal jobs. And so veterans may be eligible to receive either what's known as a, a zero, five, or a 10-point federal hiring preference 
in competitive appointments. Um, and so, you know, a veteran may apply to a, a federal position and receive a bit of a boost, um, either, you know, a zero, five, or 10 point boost on the scale, the hiring scale when applying to certain positions. Um, veterans may also be considered for special non competitive appointments, uh, which they are only allowed. Um, you know, those privileges under eligible law. Um, so those are things to look into if, if veterans are interested in working in some sort of federal capacity. Uh, finally, to kind of close it out, I think one thing that we want to mention also is just that in addition to all of the benefits that we discussed today and other benefits that exist on kind of a national federal level, um, it has a whole host of variety of benefits offered to uh, disabled veterans or even just veterans in general. Um, and so these, <laughs> they really uh, vary widely and they're different state by state. So I would really encourage any veteran that's interested to look up their own state um, rules and regulations and benefits that are offered and uh, see if there's anything that they can take advantage of. Great, thanks Mike. So um, <clears throat> I think that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. And to learn more about these and other veterans benefits, please be sure to check out our blog and our other YouTube videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you get um, all the videos uh, that you would want to watch on veterans benefits and related issues. 